All right, guys, you are going to be taking a test tomorrow. On Friday, you are taking a test. So today we are going to review for that test. It's going to be very similar to last week's review, well, the week before, um, when I went over pretty much what the homework was. Okay, if you watched that video, it was pretty long. So this one I'm not gonna make as long. I'm not gonna go over every single question with you, just the ones that a lot of people kind of get mixed up or that are a little bit confusing, okay? There are some subtraction problems that we won't go through, um, but the beginning of the homework, we will pretty much go through all of them, okay? So we're gonna start with number one. When you take the homework, when you take the homework quiz, you will see these exact questions. So if you want to write down the answers, you can. If I were you, I would write number one and then solve the problem and write the answer down with me and then put a box around it so that when you go to the homework, you see number one and you have the answer boxed on your paper so you'll know what the answer is, okay? But remember, like I said, we are not going to be doing every single question. So we are going to start with the first one. Three quarters, six dimes, three nickels and nine pennies is how much money? Okay, how much money is this? Three quarters equals 75 cents. So remember, I'm gonna write it like that. Six dimes is 60 cents. Three nickels is 15 cents. And nine pennies is nine cents. Remember, don't write 90 cents, write nine cents. So that's what we're adding. I'm gonna do it over here on this side. I'm going to do 0 0.75, 0 0.60, 0 0.15, and 0 0.09. So you're probably gonna wa wanna write it all out like that and then we can just add them all together. So five plus zero is five, plus five is 10, plus nine is 19. So I'm gonna put my nine down there, my one up here. One plus seven is eight, plus six, is 14 plus one is 15. So I'm put my five down there and my one up there. Don't forget my decimal. One plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is one. So my answer is $1.59. The answer to number one is $1.59. Make sure you know how to do this. Please make sure you know how to do this. On the Tuesday video, we went over some more of this. So if you, at the very end, so if you are not sure how to do this, go to the Tuesday video and I have explained how to go through these. We did a few problems together, okay? Moving on to number two. So your answer for number one, $1.59. Number two, Naya put 50 math books as evenly as possible in seven stacks, okay? There are two questions for this, for number two. How many stacks had exactly seven books? And then how many stacks had eight books? Let me give you a hint. Your answers should add up to seven. How many stacks? How many stacks? Well, we know that there are only seven stacks total, right? So that's something that will help you on your homework and on the test tomorrow. Your answers have to add up to how many ever stacks you have total. Okay, so she has 50 math books and she's trying to put them into seven stacks. So we are going to divide 50 divided by seven. Seven can't go into five, but it can go into 50. How many times? Seven, seven times seven is 49. Then we're gonna subtract 50 minus 49. If you wanna do it like this, you can, is one. Nothing to bring down, so our remainder is one, okay? So how many stacks had exactly seven books? How many stacks had exactly seven books? I want you to think about this. And then how many stacks had eight books, okay? If we had seven, so, whoops, what is happening? Seven. We don't really have seven stacks that have exactly seven books. If we wanted to divide them evenly, we would have about seven books in each stack. But we have an extra, we have an extra book. 
So one of these stacks is going to have to have that extra book in it, right? So how many stacks had exactly seven books? Only six stacks, because one of these stacks has to have that extra book in it. So one stack had eight books. Let me show, I understand that this is a very confusing concept. So let's go through and check our answer. There are two ways that you can check your answer. Six plus one is seven. So we know that part's right. Okay. How many stacks had exactly seven books? Seven times six is 42. Eight times one is eight. If I add those up, I should get 50 because that's how many books we had total, which I do get 50 when I do that, okay? So the, this is kind of a confusing question because when you divide, you do get seven, but you have to subtract one from that because you have an extra book that's gonna go in one of those stacks. So if I were you on the test tomorrow and on your homework today, if you're going to re-solve this problem, make sure you check it in both of those ways. Your two answers, need to equal how many of our stacks you have. And then once you get your answers, you can multiply seven times whatever answer, and then eight times whatever answer, and then add those together, and you should get this number right here. Okay, this is like a three, four step problem. I know that it's difficult, but I know that you can do it. Okay, if you want to go back a few minutes and watch how I explained that and try to do it on your own, feel free to do that. Okay, the test is going to have a question that's very, very similar to this. Okay, all right, moving on, number three. Number three, Martin paid $1 for a folder and received 43 cents back in change. How much did the folder cost? How much did the folder cost? We did some of these problems in the Tuesday video as well. Okay, and on your homework, if you did it, you saw Miss Moon bought a taco, Mrs. Bushman bought a pug keychain. Okay, so Martin paid $1 for a folder, he paid $1. He received 43 cents back in change. So how much was the folder? Well, we've got to subtract in order to figure out how much that folder was. So this is the problem that we are going to do. Okay, again, we can't do zero minus three. So we're going to borrow and we're going to borrow one more time. 10 minus three is seven. Nine minus four is five. Zero minus zero is zero. So our answer is 57 cents, 57 cents. Okay, so you can write this down for number three. Number four, Frank wrote each of his 12 spelling words 10 times. In all, how many words did Frank write? We're gonna go down to number four so that you can see that question. I just read it to you. Um, Frank wrote each of his spelling words 10 times. In all, how many words did he write? So he wrote 12 spelling words 10 times each. That is what you're going to do for number four. So if I were you, I would pause the video and figure out what the answer is to that. If you already know what it is, write it down. I'm not gonna tell you the answer, but that's how you solve number four. Okay, we're moving on to number eight. We are going to round, sorry, not number eight, number five. We are going to round this number and round this number to the nearest thousand. And then we're going to, we are going to find the sum of the two rounded numbers. We're gonna round both of those numbers and then find the sum. The sum is the answer to an addition problem. So we're going to round both of those numbers and then add them together, okay? So if I'm rounding 6,348 to the nearest thousand, I'm gonna look at the three. It's not bigger than five, so it's gonna keep the number at 6,000. Plus, remember we're finding the sum. Round this to the nearest thousand, I look at the eight, it is bigger than five, so it bumps that up to a two, so it's 2,000. 6,000 plus 2,000 is the answer to number five. I'm not going to tell you the answer, but you guys can do that in your head right now, right? 6,000 plus 2,000, write that number down, and then you'll have the answer to number five. All right, number six. Let's go ahead and scroll down to number six. This is a picture that you will see on your homework. Which side? or which two sides of this pentagon appear to be parallel? Which two sides are parallel? Remember when we talk about, when we have talked about parallel lines, parallel lines are like railroad tracks, right? They can go on forever and ever and they'll never touch. 
So what about these lines? Will they go on and will they ever touch? Boom, they just touched. So those aren't parallel. What about this and this? Will they ever touch? Boom, they just touched. So those aren't parallel. So look at this and figure out what two lines would go on forever and ever and never touch. If you said these lines, you would be correct. Those could go on forever and ever and they would never touch. So the answer to this is line D, E, and B, C, okay? This is B, C, right? And this is D, E. So those, that is the answer to number six. So if you wanna write that down, you can write that down. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number seven. I promise the next few ones we'll get through pretty quickly. All right, this is a yes or no question. Is that a line of symmetry? That means does the one side equal the other side if you were to fold it in half? Is this a line of symmetry? The answer is yes, it is a line of symmetry. If I were to fold this over, it would land right there. So it is symmetrical. All right, moving on to number eight. Number eight. All right, we are going to talk about this one. A square with a perimeter of 60 centimeters has sides that are how many centimeters long? So the perimeter is 60, and you have to figure out what the side lengths are. You have to figure out what the side lengths are. So first thing we need to know is how many sides are there? Well, it's a square, so how many sides does a square have? Four sides. So you are going to do the perimeter divided by how many sides the object has. So if this was an octagon, you would divide by eight. If it was a pentagon, you would divide by five, okay? Because each side is the same length. So you do the, all of the sides combined, the perimeter, divided by how many sides you have, which is four. Okay, so four can go into six. One time, one times four is four. Six minus four is two bring down the zero, four can go into 25 times, five times four is 20, 20 minus 20 is zero. So your answer is 15 centimeters. That's the answer to number eight, 15 centimeters. All right, moving on to number nine, we are going to go over this one as well. Number nine, segment AB. All right, so we've got a lot of a lot going on in this picture. So let's just break it apart piece by piece. Segment AB right here is 19 millimeters. Segment BC is 17 centimeters. And then it says the whole thing, A all the way over to D, is 64 millimeters. How long is segment CD? So we are trying to figure out how long this segment is. Okay, so we are going to do a little bit of subtraction here. We are going to take the whole thing, all of it, 64, and we are going to subtract whatever this is. Whatever that is, if we take the whole thing and subtract this, it will leave us with the red part, which is what we want, right? So before we can subtract this part, we have to add these together to figure out what that part is, right? So let's go over here, 19 plus 17. Nine plus seven is six, well, 16, bring your one up. One plus one plus one is 30 or three, so 36. So we know that this purple piece right here that I'm coloring kind of in, right? That's 36. So now we're gonna do 64, all of it, minus 36, and that's gonna give us the red, the red part. So let's go ahead and do that. We can't do four minus six. So we've got a bar from the six, make that a 14. 14 minus eight, or 14 minus six is eight. Five minus three is two. So our answer is 28 millimeters. If you need to go back over this question, just go back a few minutes and watch this part again. You will see this on the test tomorrow, something very similar to this, okay? We are going to move on to number 10, move on to number 10. And talk about what fraction is equal to one and one half. Okay, on your homework, 
it has this question and then obviously you have answer choices so you're going to look at the answer choices to figure out what that is what fraction is equal to one and one half i will tell you the fraction that it gives you is the improper fraction to this mixed number okay so we are going to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction so we the way that we do that is we do two times one which is two and then we're adding the one so two plus one is three and then we keep the bottom number the same this is a different concept we have practiced going from improper fractions into mixed numbers now we're doing the opposite okay you are going to have to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction so let me go through those steps one more time with you i'll use a different color so it's helpful you do the denominator times the whole number two times three i mean sorry two times one which is two so the answer is two and then you add the numerator two plus one and that's where we get three okay and then you keep the denominator the same it's still over two think about it okay you've got one whole piece and one half is that the same thing as having three of these colored in three halves boom look at that it's the same okay so if you need to go back through and watch that part again i would just rewind it just a little bit right we've got two times one which is two and then you add that top number which is three okay we are going so write that down three over two is the answer to number 10 and let's continue on we are going to skip number 11 and number 12 because those are just addition and subtraction problems you guys should be able to do those we're going to go to number 13 i'm just going to show you a trick for number 13 it will help you um and then we will move on so number 13 five dollars and nine cents times 10. okay i'm just going to write this out here five dollars and nine cents times 10. If you want to do this whole thing, you wanna do it like that, great, do that. That's, we'll give you the right answer if you do it correctly. Or there's this cool little trick. Whenever you multiply something by 10, if it has a decimal, all you need to do is move the decimal one spot to the right. So instead of putting my decimal here, I'm gonna move my decimal here. And that is the answer. Five, zero, decimal, nine. If that's money, then obviously I need to put that zero on the end, right? $50.90. Whenever you multiply something by 10, if it has a decimal, all you have to do is move the decimal one place to the right, and that's your answer, okay? So that's the answer to number 13, $50.90, okay? Number 14 is two digit by two digit multiplication. Okay, you've had several problems like this on homeworks. Um, there, I have a video on my YouTube channel that goes over two digit by two digit multiplication. If you need to watch that, you can. Number 15 is division, long division with money. We did some of those problems yesterday, so we're gonna skip that one as well. Number 16, let's go down to number 16. We will go over this one just as a review. We did some of this stuff on Monday. Number 16 we did on Monday. Um, but we are going to go over it. Your um, homework will look like this. Google Docs just didn't let me do, well, maybe I'm just not smart enough to figure it out, but it didn't have a square root sign that I could find. So your homework will actually look like this over here. So you're going to do six squared, which is 36, minus, what's the square root of 36? Six. So 36 minus six is 30. Okay, so that is the answer to number 16. Number 16 is 30. Okay, number 16 is 30. Number 17, don't forget to line up your decimals. We're not going to go over that one together, but do not forget to line up your decimals. Number 18, remember the zero trick. Okay, remember the zero trick. How many zeros are we going to have? One, two, three. So our answer is going to have three zeros. And then all we need to do is eight times three. When we do eight times three, we put that number right here and that will give us our answer. Okay, we're not gonna go over that one either. Number 19 and 20, 
On your homework, you are going to solve for the missing number. You're adding, but to solve for the missing number, you're going to have to subtract as well. Okay, so when you see those on your homework, you'll know what I mean. This is what they look like. We're not going to do them together, but when you're trying to find this number, you have to do this minus this to figure out what n is, right? And to figure out these, to figure out what n is over here, you have to add all of these up and then subtract it from this to figure out what this equals, okay? So you've seen problems like these before, so I'm not gonna go over every single one of them, but remember, you can send me a message on Canvas. If you do not know how to do one of them and you would like to figure out you would like somebody to go through it with you, you can send me a message on Canvas and I can help you solve some of these problems, okay? You are going to be studying for your test today. I just know it. I know that you just want to study for hours and hours and hours. And this homework will really, really help you. If you know how to do every problem on the homework today, you will know how to do every problem on the, on the test tomorrow, okay? So don't forget about Imagine Math Facts. Don't forget about Imagine Math. You guys can always be doing those but don't forget to do your homework on Canvas. You guys are doing awesome, so great. I'm excited to see how well you do on your test tomorrow. Good luck on the homework today, and I will talk to you guys next week. Good luck on your test tomorrow.